Welcome to Pleasantville, a once idyllic American town that epitomized health and well-being. Nestled in the heart of America, Pleasantville was a beacon of vibrant health and vitality. Its residents led an active lifestyle fueled by fresh, wholesome foods. The heart of this healthy living was Johnson's Grocery, the local store that brimmed with fresh produce, lean meats, and essential staples. Picture a time when the supermarket aisles were not inundated with boxes of processed foods filled with sugar, but instead lined with fresh meats, eggs, cheese, vegetables, and local whole dairy products. The aroma of freshly cooked bacon wafted through the air, a comforting reminder of a time when food was simple, nutritious, and satisfying. In the words of a local historian, Pleasantville was a place where obesity was a rarity. The townsfolk had a preference for whole foods, and it played a pivotal role in maintaining their health and vitality. The historian's words paint a vivid picture of a time when good health was the norm, not the exception. The people of Pleasantville lived in harmony with nature, their diets reflecting the bounty of the seasons. Their meals consisted of hearty stews, fresh salads, and homemade pies. They ate food that was grown in their backyards or sourced from local farms. The concept of eating out was a novelty, reserved for special occasions. Fast food chains were non-existent and soda was considered a treat, not a daily beverage. But as we delve deeper into the annals of history we see a shift in this idyllic lifestyle. The late 50s and early 60s marked the dawn of a new era, an era that promised convenience at the cost of nutrition. The aisles of Johnson's Grocery started to change. Boxes of ready-to-eat meals began to replace the fresh produce. Canned goods took the place of fresh meats. The promise of convenience and longevity of shelf life began to overshadow the importance of nutrition. With the arrival of the late 50s and early 60s the landscape began to shift. The once healthful Pleasantville was on the brink of a dietary revolution, one that would have far-reaching consequences for generations to come. As convenience and longer shelf life became priorities processed foods started making their way into homes across Pleasantville. It was the late 50s and early 60s, a time when the promise of modernity and progress was reflected in every corner of life, including our kitchens. The allure of quick easy meals and snacks was too tempting to resist for the busy American family. Mr. Johnson, the owner of the local grocery store, recalls this shift in consumer demand. These new products promise convenience and longer shelf life, it's what people seem to want, he said in a conversation from those early days of transition. His archival footage paints a picture of the time when canned soups, frozen dinners and pre-packaged snacks began to replace fresh produce, meats, and essential staples on the shelves of Johnson's Grocery. But it wasn't just about convenience. The marketing campaigns of the time played a significant role too. Processed food companies touted their products as symbols of modern living, associating them with progress, prosperity, and even patriotism. The messaging was clear, processed foods were the future and everyone was encouraged to be a part of it. What started as a trickle soon turned into a flood. By the 70s, processed foods had not only made their way into Johnson's Grocery and every other store in Pleasantville, but they had also become a staple in American homes. The shift was so gradual yet so profound that it almost went unnoticed. As we pause to look at a timeline, a disturbing trend emerges. The increase in processed food consumption coincides with a steady rise in obesity rates. From the relatively slim figures of the 20s, Americans began to put on weight from the 70s onwards, reaching alarming proportions by the turn of the century. The question we must ask ourselves is, when did it become okay to be fat? A closer look at the timeline reveals a growing trend of weight gain across America. Let's start in the roaring 20s when the average American was relatively slim, owing to physically demanding jobs and a diet low in processed foods. Fast forward to the 50s and we see processed foods just beginning to infiltrate the market. By the time we hit the 70s, weight gain had become noticeable, coinciding with the rise of fast food and sugary drinks. The 90s saw obesity rates begin to skyrocket, a trend that continued into the new millennium. By the 2000s over one-third of US adults were categorized as obese. As we moved into the 20s of the 21st century, rates of obesity-related diseases reached all-time highs. Today obesity is not just about appearance, it's a significant health risk. Obesity has evolved from a cosmetic issue to a dire health concern. It's no longer about fitting into the perfect dress or suit, but about the ticking time bomb of health risks that comes with carrying around excess weight. As we delve deeper into the health implications of obesity, we find a Pandora's box of medical conditions. 
It's like a chain reaction, where one issue triggers another, creating a vortex of health problems. Obesity is often the instigator of this vicious cycle. One inescapable reality is the rise in type 2 diabetes, a condition where the body struggles to regulate blood sugar levels. The American Diabetes Association reports that almost 9 out of 10 obese individuals develop this life-altering disease. But the repercussions of obesity go beyond diabetes. It's a significant contributor to heart disease, the leading cause of death worldwide. The extra weight puts a strain on the heart, leading to hypertension and increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Furthermore, obesity is linked to certain types of cancer. The World Health Organization estimates that about one-third of cancers of the colon, kidney and digestive tract are due to overweight and obesity. The list of health issues associated with obesity is long and daunting. It includes sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, fatty liver disease, and even mental health issues like depression and anxiety. Now let's hear from a health expert. We are witnessing an unprecedented rise in conditions like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, and even certain cancers. If we don't address this obesity crisis, we're setting ourselves up for a future riddled with preventable health problems. But despite the grim statistics and the seemingly insurmountable health challenges, there is a glimmer of hope, the carnivore diet. This dietary approach, which promotes consuming only animal products, is showing promising results in reversing obesity and its associated health issues. It's a beacon of hope in the dark world of obesity-related health problems. However, it's important to remember that while diets like the carnivore diet may offer a solution, the real power to change lies within us. It starts with acknowledging the problem and taking steps to reverse it. It's time we ask ourselves, when did it become okay to be fat? And more importantly, what are we going to do about it? The carnivore diet is a dietary approach that is reversing many health issues. This diet, quite simply put, involves consuming only animal products. It's a radical departure from conventional dietary wisdom, yet it's finding increasing acceptance among those who have found little success with other diets. Meet John, a carnivore diet enthusiast. I was skeptical at first, he admits, but after a few weeks I noticed significant changes. My energy levels were up, my weight was down, and even my skin looked healthier. By focusing solely on animal products, I've managed to lose weight, gain muscle, and improve my overall health. But what does science have to say about this? Let's hear from our nutrition expert, Dr. Smith. The carnivore diet is high in quality proteins and fats and low in carbohydrates, she explains. This could lead to a natural weight loss. What's more, it eliminates processed foods and sugars, which are primary drivers of obesity and related health issues. Supplementing with vitamins and minerals that are naturally scarce in animal foods is okay, but red meats have everything we need to thrive. So, could the carnivore diet be a solution to our obesity crisis? It's too early to say. However, the results are promising. Individuals like John are living proof that a return to a simpler, more natural diet might be the key to reversing the health issues associated with obesity. As the food landscape continues to change, the question remains, when did it become okay to be fat? And more importantly, how can we turn back the tide? The carnivore diet, along with other whole food strategies, offers a glimmer of hope. A hope for a future where obesity is no longer the norm, but an exception. A future where we can reclaim our health and our lives from the clutches of processed foods and sedentary lifestyles. As we conclude this scene, let's keep this hope alive and continue our quest for solutions. After all, our health and the health of future generations depend on it. The drastic changes in America's food landscape have led to a health crisis. Our journey through the decades has unveiled the causes and effects of America's obesity epidemic. We've explored the once healthy town of Pleasantville, witnessed the rise of processed foods, tracked the alarming increase in obesity rates, and delved into the health implications. We've also discovered how alternative diets, like the carnivore diet, are offering a beacon of hope for a healthier future. But perhaps the most thought-provoking insight comes from a resident of Pleasantville, who poses a question we all need to consider. Interview with Pleasantville resident. We need to ask ourselves, when did it become okay to be fat? And more importantly, what are we going to do about it? Thank you for joining us on this journey to understand America's obesity epidemic and the steps we can take to reverse it.